Welcome in to the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Proudly presented by Arkansas Tech University, D3 Auto Sales, and by Metcalf Trucking Company. Today we sit down with the head coach of the Dirks Outlaws, Paul Ernest. Coach of the Dirts Outlaws, Coach Ernest. Coach, thank you for being here with us today. First of all, I want to talk about uh, your team last year. Tell us a little bit about how that team, uh, how that team went through the season. So last year we we finished here three and seven, very disappointing. Um, we had some some really good senior players up front uh, who didn't play as well as I would like for them to play. Uh, lots of reasons for that. Um, can't really put a finger directly on it. Uh, blame falls on my shoulders. Uh, put a lot on those linemen, and we we just didn't, um, uh, you know, didn't um, produce the way that I thought we would. They were big. They were uh, pretty smart, um, and I just didn't put them in the best chances to be successful. Uh, we had a new quarterback last year playing for the first time, and Andrew Mack thought he did a tremendous job. Uh, underestimated our uh, skill positions as far as their ability to make make big plays happen. Uh, we didn't have an eraser for the previous years at Derrick's. We'd always had an eraser. Uh, somebody that if the coach made a bad play call, as long as he had it in his hands, he could take it to the house. He last Sharp a few years ago. Last year, we struggled to find that, and offensively, our production was down. But uh, defensively, uh, we just weren't very good. Uh, we didn't tackle well. We didn't run the ball well. We lined up fairly well. So, uh, you know, it was kind of hard to identify sometimes what exactly the problems were other than just uh, we didn't coach them hard enough to get great effort and get great execution. Okay. And um, talk about some of your returning players and how you're, you're planning to switch up what happened last year and uh, point it towards this year. So we've got, in my opinion, our senior leadership was almost a uh, 180 degree turn headed right back in the right direction you want to go. Um, we'll start off with Grayson Kersey. Uh, he is a kid that last year was probably our uh, really underestimated his impact for us offensively. He was our uh, H-back, sniffer back. And um, until he went down, I didn't realize how much he cleaned up of what everybody else did. So it exposed our offensive line a little bit more. Uh, he's back this year after suffering an ACL injury. and We lost him in week two uh, last year. So... Uh, I think losing him, and he, he was last year one of our major emotional and uh, physical leaders, and without his presence, both offensively and defense, he was also starting inside linebacker, so we lost 100-plus tackles there, too. Uh, and getting him back and him being hungry, I was really kind of concerned in spring ball uh, about him getting a chance to put pads on and killing one of those younger guys that hadn't really been out there with him yet. But he did a great job. He was hungry. He flew around. He hit. Uh, biggest thing in, is in the weight room everywhere, those guys hadn't missed a day. Uh, complete and total 180, where, uh, you know, last year those same linemen kids were, uh, I got to work, I got to work, I got to work, I got to work, and I have no doubt they were working. But these guys asked if we move it two hours earlier, so we, we don't mind getting up at 5 o'clock to get up here and get, get our workout in. And so uh, that senior leadership taking us right back in a positive direction, I think, is going to pay dividends. Jaron Hill is another kid that was right there with Grayson and the same deal. Those two kids came to me wanting to start uh, two hours earlier than what we were, what we were planning on starting. Uh, and uh, he does a tremendous job on the defensive line. And then we've got Juan Salazar, who uh, as a sophomore was a starting outside receiver. And last year I was expecting him to be our play that eraser role, that big play guy. Uh, we just had a hard time getting the ball to him. And, and then we had a harder time blocking out in space. So, um, this year he's back. He's playing more of a, a slot back, wing back kind of look. Uh, but but we've been excited about what we've seen. Our other seniors are uh, also kids that I think have the right attitude. Uh, haven't played a whole lot. You know that we've been we've been really lucky and really fortunate here uh, for about the past six seven years to have back to back to back groups that were stacked with talent, both offensive line and skill wise. To the point to where a kid like Eli Sharp, as even as a sophomore, would have been the go-to guy on some of those other teams. 
Uh, he was a, a role player, a really good one, but he was a role player as a sophomore and then an all-state player junior senior year, and they had those kids for six years. Uh, and uh, uh, our seniors, uh, you know, besides Jaron Juan and, and Grayson or uh, P.J. Eisenhower, he's, he's going to get some work at, at tackle, and he hasn't missed a day. Uh, Sam Ernest hasn't missed a day at a wide receiver and cornerback, and uh, I'm missing somebody here. Um, Justin Humphreys at tight end, uh, just leading by example. Uh, get there, work hard, don't complain. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what those guys will do once we get the field as far as leadership and trying to bring a young, inexperienced team around. Sounds like you have a lot of great assets on the field and behind the scenes in the weight room. Um, tell us about some of your assistant coaches. Most of the time as head coach, the blame, whether it's good or bad, goes to you. Tell us about uh, how some of your assistant coaches help on the field um, or even behind the scenes. So we had to hire a new one this year. We lost uh, Tristan Snyder, who was our O-line coach uh, and D-line coach. He, he left us, went to D-Queen, uh, went back home, and, uh, you know, he did a tremendous job for us. Former offensive lineman uh, in college, former offensive lineman at the Queen, did a great job, had a great rapport relationship with kids. Uh, we're going to miss him a bunch. We replaced him uh, with Lance Castleman, who was the head coach at Horatio. Uh, and uh, we kind of got lucky there. He was scheduled to be the head coach at a bigger school. Some things kind of went south, and uh, I was able to, to entice him, I think, a little bit with being able to not have to move his family and still have a, a job. He's going to be our defense coordinator, coach our line. Uh, we were better the day he walked in our weight room. Uh, he's, coach Snyder was a great weight, weight room guy, was good with the weights, uh, good with setting up workouts, good with all that. Coach Castleman is probably every bit that good and a speed guy. So we gained the speed element and we initiated uh, his speed program into the first 35 minutes of every day that we do anything. Uh, we're going to continue that through the season. And we have seen some tremendous speed gains by our kids already um, uh, to the point to where a kid, uh, a senior high kid was running a very slow 6'5", 40, uh, work down within a month down into that 5 one forty time, uh, which isn't fast by any stretch, but if we can get every kid to make some moves, our team speed can make up for a lot of things. And, uh, you know, we're just thrilled to death of that. And it's not any kind of magic formula. It's not anything. It's just focusing on form and getting some repetitions. And uh, when you run fast, run fast. Uh, uh, he uh, is going to be our defensive coordinator, and uh, we're real excited about what he's going to bring there. Uh, and then the guy returning is our offensive coordinator, uh, Keenan Owens. He was a three sport all state athlete in high school. He's been with us now to be his third year. Has a really good grasp of what we do in our offense. Threw him a little wrinkle this year because we had to go uh, kind of backwards a little bit with some of the stuff that we were doing as far as like where my scheme has evolved in 25 years to what we're doing now. And um, so we had to go backwards a little bit, but he's picked it up. Got a great mind. Uh, those guys handle really everything that happens off the field. Uh, uh, Coach Castleman, uh, like today, just in during workouts, three things kind of popped up that normally you'd have to tell one of those younger guys, and he's already got it done before I even recognize that it, it needs to be done. Uh, and then Coach Owens is getting that way, but they do, they do everything. I mean, I don't, I, I am very fortunate to be blessed not only with with Tristan Snyder and Keenan Owens being good coaches, but uh, you know, good workers. And sometimes right now, when you hire a young coach, uh, they want the reins to the offensive car or the D. They want to be coordinators or head coaches right now. Uh, don't understand kind of the progression of, you know, hey, we got to do laundry. Uh, it's three o'clock in the morning, but those grass stains don't look good. We got to get those out. Uh, things like that. And these two guys are just phenomenal. They, they do all that stuff where I can get to it. So uh, I'd love to be able to tell you what they do. I just say they do it all. They, they do it all. So sounds like you have some great assistance yes, with sir. you. Um, talk about how your offensive scheme is going to look this year. Is it going to stay the same as previous years, or is that going to change? Uh, that's kind of a tricky question. So um, I started uh, in, in the late 90s, and we were in uh, the Delaware wing tee. And through the years, um, we've morphed from the Delaware wing tee traditional into a shotgun wing tee, into a shotgun spread but every run play, every pass concept, everything we did was still based in the Delaware wing tee. And so uh, when people see what we're doing right now in senior high, 
we're back in the traditional Delaware wing tee. We're, we have a wing and a tight end instead of a sniffer and uh, a wide out. And then instead of a, a back out as a wide receiver, we now have two backs in the backfield and we're under center. So it's been a fairly simple transition for our kids, much easier than I expected it to be um, because they're kind of like, well, that's, that's, that's just whatever the play call was we had last year. We just, we have to add a new uh, number to it, have to add an element because in the Delaware wing tee, it's all about series action, backfield action, but it's still, uh, you know, a back number, a hold number and a blocking scheme. So uh, for example, if we were um, gonna run a passing play, uh, just to make it very simple, uh, we might call 500 smash. And so what that's gonna be 500 series is a five step drop series. And then smash is the route play combination. It's a four receiver all, they, they know their routes based on just being called smash. Um, but uh, offensively, our junior high actually with their talent level, um, they have a few more skilled players with some dynamic ability. They're in what I would have called my, my base spread wing tee kind of look. So you're gonna see them in some shotgun and you're gonna see our high school in some under center wing tee, so. With your defense, I think you just mentioned you're getting a new uh, defensive coordinator this year. Uh, how are things going to change on that side of the ball? Well, hopefully they change for the better. Uh, he, uh, he's he got a great mind for it. Um, I'm a little concerned at times with our kids and, a, and kind of a talent gap a little bit of what uh, size uh, gap, young, uh, that means we're not as experienced. I get a little concerned with teaching things the right way. And I know that probably sounds nuts, um, but you can, you can try to anchor, shed, and recover, and squeeze, and keep people off all day long. But if you're 135 pounds being blocked by a 235-pound guy, I don't care how much you try to anchor, shed, and recover, you're going to do it going backwards. So I'm a little concerned about that because he does things right. I mean, like, that's that's the way it should be taught. That's the way it should be taught at all levels. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see the kids have taken to it well because it's what we've taught in the past. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be basing out of an odd front. Uh, that odd front, I'd love to tell you that it's a 5-2. I'd love to tell you it's 5-3 or 3-4. That odd front basically is just an odd front where you could be in a 5-2 based on this offensive look. Uh, you could be in a 3-4 on a wider spread look. We're going to try to match our numbers where the numbers are needed to be gap sound, and he has uh, really done a great job of uh, getting the base of that plan installed. Um, he is much more patient than I am. So... He is better about staying with the base before he wants to jump to something that comes off of a base. Uh, I like to install a run and then install the play action pass and then the screen off of it kind of all at the same time. So um, he has he is made our defense better already. Uh, Personnel-wise, losing our two uh, best players to transfer uh, is going to really show a deficiency at the linebacker and the uh, defensive back depth. But uh, I really like what our kids have done. And I really like the fact that our speed development has come along to the point where we may be able to make up some of those deficiencies. I want to talk about your schedule, not just in the preseason, but also when we get more into the season, uh, those conference games. First of all, how's your preseason looking? Do you have any tougher teams than normal, or is it looking? Um, well, I mean, all the teams I feel like are pretty tough teams that we're playing. Uh, Falk uh, was a very young team last year, and uh, I think they were – six points total away from maybe a playoff spot, or maybe they did make the playoff spot, uh, but they were young. They had a tremendous explosive running back. Uh, they took us to the woodshed last year right off the bat. Uh, we opened up uh, with them in week zero, and then we turn around and, and host Mountain Pine in week one here. Mountain Pine is uh, coming off an eight-man schedule. Um, they're gonna be more athletic than we are. They're gonna be more explosive than we are. Uh, just. I think they're kind of upper class heavy and we're going to be sophomore heavy. And, uh, you know, we're going to have more time matching the speed that they're going to bring. Uh, they, they were really competitive in eight man and they're going to be uh, just as competitive, I think, in 11 man. Uh, and then we have Parker's Chapel, who I'm not sure. I think they were eight man as well. Uh, kind of one of those deals that we were both looking and kind of came across each other. A little bit of a travel distance there. So we just ended up with the open date. So uh, we ended up getting together and deciding to play that. I don't know much about them at all. Uh, I know they were eight man. I don't know if that was from a number situation or something else. Uh, but then we have our bye week and then start our conference play. So uh, hopefully we can kind of get a feel for the speed of things. 
from both Falk and uh, uh, Mountain Pine because I know they're both going to have tremendous speed athletes. And then uh, Falk's going to be big. They've got some big linemen as well. So Mountain Pine's a little bit other than their athleticism and speed from their skill positions, an anomaly to me. Uh, but Parker's Chapel is just a big question mark. I have no idea what they're going to be like. So, is there a specific conference game you're looking forward to? One that you think is going to be tougher than normal? They're all going to be tough. I, in my opinion, um, we went from being in a conference that was uh, anybody could win it because nobody was hitting shoulders better than anybody to a conference that anybody could win it because nobody is hitting shoulders better than anybody. But on the other end of it, they're all. Um, Murfreesboro returns so many, and they're our returning conference champs. Uh, they get our returning 1,200-yard rusher transferred over there. Um, and so he's only going to make that group better. Um, Mineral Springs has got the group that they've been waiting on, uh, plus add in some transfers from, from Nashville, things like that. Uh, they're going to be extremely talented. And then from everybody I've talked to, Junction City was expected to compete for the 3A state championship with what they had coming back. They moved down into 2A and into our conference. Uh, and then Spring Hill, who was the runner-up at eight-man, returns almost everybody. I know they lost their fullback and a linebacker. I think they return about anybody else. Uh, they're going to be able to make a run at a conference title. So, um, you know, right there, uh, it was Mount Ida and kind of everybody else for, for a while. And um, now it's uh, uh, just... I think any of those teams could beat anybody. And then you go to us, uh, you go to Foreman. Uh, we can compete with anybody. Uh, it, it's just a matter of getting the right matchups at the right time and how we stay healthy. Uh, but it's, it went from being a conference that was uh, a one deep, maybe two deep round playoff conference. I think we got four teams, that legit, at least four teams that legitimately can make a run at World Memorial. Coach, I have one more question for you. It will be a successful season for the Outlaws if? Uh, it would be a successful season for me uh, and for our players, I believe, if we could uh, qualify, if we could finish in a, th a top four spot. Uh, like I said, the, the, if we could do that with what's in our conference, then a four seed in our conference could upset a one seed and move on and have a run. Um, we don't. We're, we're not used to what happened last year. We're not used to three and seven sitting at home playing your little basketball week then, or week 11, uh, but we were. And uh, our kids this year have definitely had it on their mind that step one is qualify for a playoff spot. Step two is host a playoff game. Step three, win the conference. So that's kind of our three goals and how the kind of stepping stone of how we want to achieve those. There's not going to be a uh, we just want to beat Murfreesboro thing. We're not going to be, we, we want to win the Howard County Cup, although we do want to get that cup back in our locker room. Um, you know, our kids, for our talent and what we have, our kids are going to have to learn for the first time, I think, in their athletic career to be, one, made up of, of 11 pieces, not 11 ones out there. We've, we've been pretty guilty of it. Two years ago, we were guilty of it. Last year, we were guilty of it. And I think some of it is why we've lost some of our kids that, that transferred out. Um, they're not, they're the one, and there's not enough other ones around them, and they think they're going to have to do it all on their own. And so I've been very pleased with our offseason. I've been very pleased with our leadership because they've embraced it. They're smart kids, and they're rational kids, and they'll look around and go, we're not as big as we used to be. We're not as fast as we used to be. We don't have a guy that can throw it like our previous quarterbacks. We don't have a guy that we can get the ball out to in space that can make 13 guys miss and, you know, score. Uh, so they have been very diligent on footsteps, head placement, hand placement, all the stuff that I could ask of them. And then uh, we've been to a couple team camps and uh, in the competition phases, which are just team camps, but still competition phases, we've been able to win, uh, I think, more than we actually have lost at this point. So the kids have a lot of confidence in, in what we're doing with them. They're growing to have confidence in each other, and they're starting to – uh, encourage very aggressively, but correctly. You know, not uh, even though they're hot and they're mad and they're yelling, it is received correctly, given correctly, and we get better because of it. So uh, I know that our kids want to make a run at the state championship. They also know the first step is to get to the playoffs. And so uh, make the playoffs, host the playoff game, win the conference, win, win the state championship. That's our, that's our goal progression.
And uh, I, I really think it'll be a successful year if we can qualify. And then um, uh, anything that comes after that, the kids will feel like that they've proved, proven everybody wrong. The kids that uh, kind of up and left them and the kids that uh, uh, from other schools that, that down and coaches from other schools that down. We're picked low. I think either last or next to last in about every publication that can come out there. And uh, they know that. Not that I would have told them that 150 times by now, probably 200. But, um, you know, they just want to prove people wrong. And uh, they believe in themselves. They believe in their teammates. And uh, they've been doing the work. So there's no reason if we stay healthy that we can't go out and upset some people. All right. Well, this was Coach Ernest of the Derrick Outlaws. You're watching the Arkansas preseason football courtesy of the Arkansas Sports Network. Make sure to check us out on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again for joining us on the Arkansas Sports Network's Hometown Sports Football Preview. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Arkansas Sports Network on YouTube to catch more previews and all the latest updates on your favorite teams.